two days in a row you look exactly the same, because every day you're going to put on a little this and that. Oh, but it all happens. Come on. Those that are really thy face of painting, in vain shalt thou make thyself fair. It's all vanity. Thy lovers will despise thee. They will seek thy life. And so they begin to laugh at you, sanctified people. Y'all, yeah. you can testify you didn't wear, you didn't go there, you didn't say this, do it. And now you're doing everything and worse. And guess what? The same people you're hanging out with, they're laughing yeah. at you. Yeah, you know, you'll go to the world for help. And they'll help you, and they'll turn around and say, you tell me how he's saying, you tell me how he's saying. And look, I'm struggling like that. Ain't nothing to them. And they, if, if they were really saying they wouldn't be hungry, they're really saying they would have all their bills paid, they're really saying they would have turned their water off. Y'all, this is how the world talks, see? And then our turn to the world affects our ability to be true witnesses to them. They should never know what the people of God are going through. It is none of the world's business that we are struggling with things. That's our business and God's business. And if we are being faithful soldiers to God, for I have heard a voice as of a woman in travail, and the anguish as of her that bringeth forth her first child, the voice of the daughter of Zion, that bewailed herself, that spread her hands, saying, Woe is me now, for my soul is weary because of my murderers. Well, guess what, daughter of Zion? You had a chance to do right. You had a chance to pursue righteousness, but you chose ungodliness, unrighteousness, unholiness. You chose to rebel. You chose to be hard-headed, hard-hearted. You chose to run from God. You went the other direction. And so you began to suffer the things that you're suffering. And now you want to start, oh Lord, please Lord, no, I know you're in travail, but you're going you to experience this pain, right. because when you had a chance that's what you want to do, that's right yes. come, on. come on yes, you had a chance mm -hmm. what's that thing a woman gets when y'all, before y'all have a baby, what you get what you get, oh. go on lady what you get, what, what you call it yeah, the um epidural, oh, the epidural. so you could have a spiritual epidural mm -hmm. All that birth is going on because you had a spiritual epidural, you didn't feel the pain. Yes. But at the end of the process, there's glory because there is a child. Yeah. But through all of this, you're going to experience all this pain, all this travail. And guess what? It's not at the end. Ain't no child. Mm -hmm. Ain't that something? And so we could have had the epidural. We could have said, Doctor, give me the epidural. Jesus, give me the epidural. So when, when the pain begins, I don't have to feel it. I can, I can feel something going on, but I don't feel the pain. I feel, I'm aware that there's something happening, but I don't feel the pain. And, and, and when, 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 you, when you're wise, you stay in God's good stead. So then when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Lord will lift up a standard for you. He'll, he'll sustain you. He'll protect you. And because you have learned that you made God happy through your faithfulness, you brought him joy, and his joy is your strength. And so you begin to wonder, how did I weather that storm? Well, because in your healthy days, you please the Lord. And so when you begin to go through, God gives you sustaining strength. That doesn't mean you're going to walk around always with a smile. That doesn't mean that. Doesn't mean that. Doesn't mean everything you're going to be at home just, ooh, Lord, I'm so happy because I'm going to love. No, 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 no. But in the midst of your troubles, even when you doubt God something, see, don't let, don't confuse questioning with doubt. There's a difference. And sometimes we question God, but we're convinced that we're doubting Him because we don't have an understanding. Lord, well, Lord, why, Lord, why me? Why me? Well, I never ask, I've never asked God why me. But some people do. But because people ask why me, uh, Job asked why me, but Job never doubted God. That's right. He simply asked the question. God put him in check. Mm -hmm. See, because he got to get carried away. Somehow we get carried away. Yeah. God put him in check. But Job's heart never turned away from God. He was always in love with God. And so even though we go through our trials and our tests, we, we, we struggle with some things in life. But God always gives us that power to endure, to sustain. To hold out. He encourages us in all of our misery uh -huh. that we think we're in. God is always there. And he reminds us, child, there's somebody 
worse off than you. Look to your left. Look to your right. Look down the street. Look around the corner. And somebody's sitting under a bridge. And you mad because they came to shut your water off. You ought to be happy you're not under the bridge. All right. You understand? Amen. So when we, when we begin to pursue God's righteousness, it's more than just where we don't go, what we don't smoke, what we don't drink, what we don't say. It's a lot more than that. Our lifestyle must please God. All of our ways, without faith, it is impossible to please God. And so if we don't have faith in God, that we're not pleasing Him, I'd be awfully afraid to not please God. Because if I'm not pleasing Him, then I'm displeasing Him. And if you displease God, you're going to pay the price. you got to be careful. But it, it requires wisdom. It requires wisdom. It, it requires contentment in our walk with Him. Yes, and, 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 and as Job, Job stated it, and it wasn't totally accurate because God does not slay us, but as Job says, though He slay me, yet will I trust in Him. So regardless of what I'm going through, yet will I trust Him. God, I learned to be still and to see the salvation of the Lord. Because when I ask God to work it out, uh -huh. I not keep moving and keep chucking and jiving. But I ask God to work it out. When I'm, when I'm still and I allow God to do God's job, then I can see his salvation. You know, when two people get lost and, you, and, and they're both walking around looking for each other, Guess what? They never find each other. They keep walking. But when one gets uh, the, the mindset, we, we agree before we go. See, these, listen, we're going to go out here and now. If we get lost, get separated from each other, see, I'm going to stay where I am. Mm -hmm. And you just keep walking and find me. But I'm not going to move. See? Now you cover a territory. You follow a path. And you take that path. And, and somewhere along that path, I won't be waiting on you. But if we both keep moving, chances are we're going in the same direction. And so we're going in the same direction, we'll never catch each other. Now we start to, if one of us turned around and came back, then maybe we catch each other. But that's probably never the case. And so that's what we do with God. We, 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 we ask God to do it. And then we start walking. And, and when we think that we're lost or, or we lost him, we don't stop and say, God, I'm going to wait here on you. Uh -huh. The Bible says, wait on the Lord. <laughs> Ain't that something? Man. Yes, wait on him. But we won't wait on God. We start walking and looking for our own solution. Uh -huh. I'm going to work this day out because I think I can find my way out of this wilderness. If you simply stay there and allow God to find you. And when he finds, because God ain't lost, he's never lost. And so when he finds you, then you will be just fine. But if you don't be still and allow God time to come and discover where you are, and he will meet you in your lowest point, he will meet you in your highest point. Wherever you are, God will meet you at that place, because that's the God that we serve. And, and, and there's a chance for us, people of God, to not turn our backs on God. There's a chance for us to not be held accountable for being rebellious, for, for, for walking away from God, if we simply hold to his unchanging hand and build our hope on things eternal and do not allow the world to discourage us. Now, the Bible says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, love the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the love of the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passes away and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abides forever. So anything that's associated with the world, with the cares of this life, with the pleasures of this life, if we love those things, more than we love God, then we become guilty of defying that that we've been instructed to not do in 1 John 2, 15, 16, and 17. And so we find ourselves in trouble always because we will not take heed to the voice of God. Oh, Lord, I, I, I can't doubt 
my healing because then I'll be saying that you can't do it. And then that, all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, of the eyes, pride of life, Lord, I'm looking at the man's way. Well, the doctor can do it. Oh, I've been feeling bad all night, and I ain't praying that God for nothing. But soon as I see the doctor, I perk up, hey, doc, I'm going to feel better. Now the doc's going to give me a shot, and things going to get better. But Jesus was there all the time. 